welcome everyone. Well, I'm quite excited to be here today and uh, probably you might have taken the hint that I will talk about technology. I will quickly talk about augmented reality today. This is a new technology, or if we think that way, that combines the physical world and virtual information together. We have had this for quite some time. In fact, it was first invented by the father of computer graphics, Ivan Sutherland, in 1965. Probably you'll notice on this picture that certainly one problem with it was that the system was fixed to a single location. So there wasn't much that we can do with it. This is why it was great that in 1997, researchers at Columbia University invented the first mobile augmented reality. And this took the technology outside in the real world where it actually belonged. The problem with those early prototypes, though, was that they were quite heavy and very obtrusive and all the cables kept getting in the way. So this is why the smartphone was literally a game changer. Because this small device combined all of the technology necessary to augment your environment. Suddenly, since the first smartphone came out on the market, everybody started talking about augmented reality. Companies like Liar and Junayu, they opened doors and they promised that they'll work on the software side. While companies like Google and Vuzix and Epson, they promised to deliver on the hardware side and today we can augment the environment or experience augmented reality on a desktop computer, on your smartphone, and also on the much-awaited augmented reality glasses, like the Epson Moverio. Now we have literally hundreds of examples of companies like Asta and Honda and Cola and Pepsi. They have created their own augmented reality experience to promote their products. So, if everyone is talking about it and everyone wants to do it, why isn't it then that we use augmented reality in our everyday life? Well, this is certainly something that I wanted to investigate. And well, we have plenty of examples to choose from that might point us in the right direction. Let's take Avon, for instance. This is a brand that wanted to promote their perfumes through augmented reality. So they created this augmented reality experience, and what you can do is see how a bottle of perfume would look like as though you're holding it. The only thing that you need to do is switch on your computer, make sure that you have internet connection, go on the website, launch a flash app, print the marker, switch on the camera, point the marker towards the camera, pray that you're doing this at the right angle and distance, and if all of this is satisfied, there you go, you can experience augmented reality, right? Well, I would say this is quite an effort for something so simple. Okay, then Elizabeth Erden came along and they said we'll do the same thing. And we'll promote our perfumes also with augmented reality to create excitement and engagement with our customers. And this is great, even though they make it much easier to see that virtual bottle. I really like what Thomas Carpenter writes in his blog, because he poses one fundamental question. He asks, didn't anyone tell those guys that perfumes are about the scent? and not what the bottle looks like. <laughs> well, it might be the case. Probably one of the problems is that we haven't found an application for augmented reality, the right application. But I want to tell you also now that maybe one of the problems is that we are looking too much at the technology, at the hardware and the algorithms behind it. Maybe we are too much interested to figure out how to create beautiful things that don't create value. Something that I call an elegant nonsense. And I want to prove this to you now with an experiment. I want you to imagine that you are this brilliant researcher. I do this in the evening, so I'm this brilliant researcher. You're a crafty engineer and you're a financial genius. Okay? Feel the power. You're trapped in this iron exoskeleton and you have a helmet equipped with augmented reality that can give you all of the information that you need. If you have problems with that visualization, you are that person. Okay? <laughs> right. Problem is, evil aliens have attacked the planet Earth and your humanity's only hope. But don't worry, don't worry. Remember you have the helmet? It will give you all of the information that you need right there, exactly where you need it. 
The thing is, you have to figure out how many aliens there are around you in three seconds. Otherwise, you are doomed and humanity along with you. Okay, so I will show you how the display looks like now. And I want you to find the answer. Make sure that this is the correct one and write it down. You ready? Three seconds. Here we go. Anyone? How certain are you that this is the right answer? You willing to bet your own life on this information? Are you willing to bet everyone else's life on this? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like the attitude. Okay, it might be 99, it might be something else. Bottom line is, have you, you know, if you are both amazed and shocked at this, I'm certain you're not the only one. Have you ever noticed that Star almost never reads the display? Most of the time he goes like, right, and then he waits for Jarvis to summarize it for him. <laughs> so, this happens even though he's this extraordinary person with amazing abilities. So, in my PhD, I asked, what about ordinary people? I'll tell you a secret now. I have never felt extraordinary in my life. There was one moment in time when I had the potential to feel like this. I got my uh, first computer when I was 12 and by the time I was 16 I was already writing code and I wanted to be this amazing software engineer. And of course it was difficult so um, I asked my math teacher for help and she looked at me and she said, what? Are you kidding me? This is something beyond you. This is beyond your skills. You'll never become a brilliant software engineer. And I took this to mean, whenever you have a problem in your life, whenever you have a problem with technology, it's your fault. This is beyond you. And of course, I was devastated. Have you ever felt like this? Just another ordinary person. And this is why my mission later became to, you know, forget about extraordinary people. Because later I realized that this single person, my math teacher, she has made me the biggest favor there ever was. Because I realized that technology is not about, or not only about creating the sophisticated engineering solution. In fact, if we left it to the engineers, this is what an augmented reality tomorrow will look like. <laughs> You have all of this information, right? But what can you do with that? And, well, during my research, I looked at how augmented reality applications look like at the moment. It turns out we're not far away from this future confusion. If you're standing at Warman Skating Rink in Central Park, New York, and you wanted to learn something about your environment, this is what you will see on the screen of your smartphone. Now, I truly believe that we are natural explorers. We want to learn about our environment. We crave knowledge, not only because learning is joyful, but because, yes, it gives us this connection with our surroundings and the people around us. But what can you learn from a screen <laughs> like this? It only gets in the way. It's not only confusing and misleading, it's outright annoying. So I designed experiments to understand what is it that we need to do in order to improve the situation. And it turns out that the first step is to remove all of the unnecessary information. And this is what happens. So it turns out all of the information that these current apps deliver is neither useful nor relevant, it's not interesting. So we need to remove that. And what we are left with is a person standing there and really wanting to learn something about what they're seeing. But it turns out that the physical world is already too complex. You have all of these buildings and textures and colors and noise and people moving around. You know, that's a lot to process. So I think that the way to go forward, at least one of the approaches, is to focus on a single thing. And this is scary for developers. Because they think they should put everything inside and make things look amazingly beautiful. But I think that we should deliver the right information at the right moment. 
focus attention. And then when this happens and when that person understands what is it that you're telling them, hey, the highest building in New York, then magic happens. Then they're interested. They start to engage with their environment. They want to learn more. But of course, once we focus on such ordinary situations, there is so much more that we can do with augmented reality. Take Wordlands, for instance. This is an application that allows you to become a linguistics expert within seconds because you can translate any written text in front of you. Now, I'm talking about the superpower that I've wanted to have all my life. <laughs> or the IKEA augmented reality app. It allows you to see how the furniture you're planning to buy will look like, not in the catalog, not in the store, right there in your own living room. And this is something that we couldn't do before. Now, certainly those last three examples, they're not as extraordinary as the helmet of Iron Man. But they create value, they allow you to do something that wasn't possible before. And of course, the technical side is also important. Microsoft recently announced that they will work on the hardware and develop lightweight augmented reality glasses, like HoloLens, that will allow you to augment your environment 24-7. The hardware and the algorithms behind augmented reality, behind the technology, are very important. But what I want to tell you now is that we also need to find out how this technology creates value for the people that use it. How can we make it simple for them? So I want you to imagine now with me a world where the technology creates value for the people that use it, that allows us to experience the world in new ways. An augmented reality tomorrow that is simple and elegant, where ordinary people can do extraordinary things. Thank you very much for sharing that vision with me.